Hello and welcome to Gavilan Connects. I'm Esmeralda Montenegro Owen, professor here at Gavilan College. And today our topic is stress and who has not suffered from stress, especially here on campus. A lot of students, faculty, uh, employees. Uh, so today we have a special guest. Uh, he is a doctor in psychology and he is a professor of psychology here mm -hmm. at Gavilan College. With me, Dr. Carlton Oler. Thank you so much for being here with us and, and to talk about this uh, mm -hmm. topic of stress and that as we all know, students go uh, through this a lot on a daily basis, the mm -hmm. faculty, the staff. So um, we really appreciate you being here with us. Um, Thank you. And uh, you're a doctor in uh, psychology. Right. Um, t can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Myself? Yes. Well, I'm originally from the greatest city on planet Earth called <laughs> San Francisco. And I've been in the uh, mental health field for about 30 years. It'll be 31 years, January 2013. And roughly half of that time has been spent in the classroom and then another half of that time actually practicing as a psychologist. Perfect, and um, how did you end up here at Gavilan College? Well, most of my career has been away from California, my home state, and about six years ago, I wanted to come home. Okay. And so I looked around at various teaching institutions that uh, I could put in applications to, and so I got on the internet, and I know I wanted to work in Northern California because it's close to my hometown and the greatest city on the planet, San Francisco. And so I just put in various applications in the area and um, I ended up being interviewed in several places. And there were two places I was very interested in. One was Gavilan College mm -hmm. and the other was the University of California, Davis. And I actually talked to my wife about which of the two I should choose because I received offers from both yes. and everybody thought I was crazy because <laughs> I didn't go to UC Davis, particularly two of my brothers who graduated from there, but I felt like Gavilan was the best choice of the two and I don't regret it at all. I enjoy working with the students, the other faculty, the administration. I can honestly say Gavilan is the best job I've ever had. Wow, mm -hmm. that's a huge statement mm -hmm. to say. So how long has it been now? Six years. A little over six well, years. Well, congratulations. Mm -hmm. And uh, Gavilan College is so lucky to have mm -hmm. you as well. So uh, I think there's a really good match mm -hmm. there. And um, so, so now, um, as a psychologist, you have dealt with the topic of stress a lot. And, a uh, lot. and there's a book, and we will talk about this book later. But um, mm -hmm. let's uh, talk a bit, a bit more about stress. What is stress? Stress is the psychological and physiological responses that a person can go through and usually those physiological and psychological responses are due to excessive unpleasant or demanding circumstances or events so anything that's excessive demanding or unpleasant right. is a stressor and actually the word stress comes from the latin word strictus which is an engineering term talking about how much pressure or weight can go on a building before it collapses. Okay. And what psychologists and psychiatrists have done is they've taken that Latin word strictus to mean how much can the human mind and body take before it collapses. And stress can come from either within or without. For example, you could be at home in the recliner or in the bed or anywhere and if you're thinking about something that's unpleasant, demanding or uh, excessive such as financial problems, relationship problems, that causes stress exactly. or you could actually experience it from without such as you go in to work and your boss says we're going to have to lay you off because of the financial downturn. That's a stressor from without, something okay. you have just experienced. Exactly. Wow. Uh, but that, that's a great analogy that you used, uh, mm -hmm. using the building. And, um, but what can, uh, for example, students? We're in, uh, in a college, in a, you know, we have all these students that go through stress mm -hmm. all the time. How can students um, deal with stress? And um, you know, you know, they become mm -hmm. um, conscious of it, and then they stress out even more. So what can students do in mm -hmm. this case, uh, in the various uh, cases of stress, to deal with it? 
the first most important thing for a student to do before they can even deal with the stressors in their life is to identify or target the stressors in their life. Sometimes people aren't sure about what's particularly stressing them. It may be, for example, a student says, well, this class is very difficult. Well, classes should be challenging. It should stretch you intellectually. Mm -hmm. But the problem may not be the difficulty mm -hmm. of the class. Okay. The problem may be that the student procrastinates. They're not organized. Mm -hmm. They're not managing their time. They're not taking school seriously. It's not high enough on their to-do list. So the first thing they must do is identify the specific stressor or stressors. Exactly. And that's probably the most difficult thing to do mm -hmm. for a student to narrow it down uh, and say, and to admit it, actually. Admit it. Not be in <laughs> denial. <laughs> yes. And I think even as professors, sometimes we fall into it mm -hmm. and or as adults. Uh, and uh, it's really difficult to just narrow it down to the main ones mm -hmm. and to actually tackle those. Mm -hmm. um, and. Um, what are some of the main causes uh, for stress in students, let's say? In students. Well, the book outlines 24, but I just picked out five that I believe are most applicable to students. Mm -hmm. And the first major stress for students is worrying and catastrophizing and negative thinking. Worrying is thinking over and over and over in your head of all the things that can go wrong in a situation. Right. Catastrophizing mm -hmm. is from the Greek catastrophe, which means worst case outcome. Yeah. Some students don't worry, they catastrophize. Think of catastrophizing as worrying on steroids. Yes. They're not wow. thinking about all the things that can go wrong. They've already made up their mind about what's going to go wrong and it's going to happen any moment. So of wow. course, they are more stressed out than someone who's just worrying. Okay. And then a second, a second uh, major cause of stress for students is procrastination. I tell my students that procrastination is a dagger in the back of academic success and too many students are hemorrhaging potential as a result. Mm -hmm. If you ask any student what their primary stressor is, at some point they will say, I procrastinate and procrastination mm -hmm. is just putting things off and putting things off and putting things off until you have so much to do and little time to do it in and this of course is going to breed overwhelming stress. Yes. You're not going to do well on exams or other assignments and therefore you're going to have reduced academic performance and more importantly reduced academic satisfaction which can lead to dropping out of the class or actually dropping out of school. And uh, we do have a lot of students that uh, you know, deal with this all the time and they can not uh, finish a class because right. mm, you know, halfway through, they sort of give up. Mm -hmm. Give up itis, I call it. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, so what can they do? What are some of the uh, uh, solutions to stress? To, to stress? You know, to specifically academic. Okay. Stress. The first most important thing any student can do, whether they are stressed out or not, is to get organized with their responsibilities and their time. This means getting an appointment book. I have one and I still use it and I've actually have yes. about 35 of them. So the last 35 years yes. I've been using appointment books. And in that appointment book you write down when you're going to study, if you have a job when you work, you're going to put down when you're going to exercise, when you're going to recreate or hang out with your peers or that special one. All the things you need to do in a day, you must put down in that weekly or daily planner right. and allocate the time for each and then make sure that nobody or no thing interferes with that schedule. Exactly. That's the first most important thing to do, to organize your time and responsibilities. Perfect. And, um, you know, we went around campus uh, to mm -hmm. ask questions mm -hmm. to some of uh, the students and, uh, and faculty, and mm -hmm. we have uh, some questions for you. Good, good. That uh, they would like to know the answers to, and they all deal with stress. So if we have Ellen, um, yeah, about procrastination, that's, mm -hmm. uh, that's her question. So let's see what Ellen has to ask.
Um, what would be good to do if like I procrastinated and I've realized that I've got like three days to do all these things and and I'm starting to stress so I'm starting to freeze up and how I could deal with that. The first most important thing is to recognize why she procrastinates or any students procrastinate. And here's the number one reason why students procrastinate. They are believing they still have time. <laughs> yes. They will look at the <laughs> syllabus and they will see the exam is four weeks away and they'll say, I still have time. Right. Next week they'll look at the syllabus. It's three weeks away, I still have time. Two weeks, I still have time. And for many students, one week is the exam and they say they still have time. And then the weekend before the exam, just a yes. few days, they say, I have no more time. Exactly. So now they are <laughs> under tremendous pressure to study all of this material in this amount of time for an exam. So the first most important thing to do is to understand why you procrastinate. And for most students, it's because they believe they still have time. And then you get out that appointment book. This is what you must do from this moment forward yes. is put down in your appointment book, this exam is four weeks away. I need to study every day for this amount of time up until when yes. I take the exam. That way, the weekend before the exam, you've already studied up. All you're going to do now is just go over what you already know right. to reinforce it so when you get the exam in front of you, you'll be able to put down the answers that you need. Great tips. Perfect. And um, now let's uh, see if we have Jonas. And he has a question about uh, his job and stress. Mm -hmm. uh, he lost his job, so this is his question. Yeah, so I just lost my job and I'm dealing with a lot of financial stress. So what are some ways where I could deal with that and get out of this rut that I've gotten into? Yeah, that's a double whammy because most students don't have much money to begin with and to lose their job makes it even more complicated. And the first best thing to do is to accept that you are going to be stressed because you've lost your job, which means a source of income, which means you cannot pay the bills like you normally would. So the first most important thing is to accept that I am going to be stressed because I am in a crisis situation. And then once you've accepted that, you have to do all you can to not let the reality of that situation so stress you out that you're full of thoughts, feelings, fears, worrying, catastrophizing, negative thinking. Yes. You step back as best you can and say to yourself, what can I do, obviously, to bring in funds? Right. And of course, that may mean looking for other uh, employment. Exactly. Uh, it may mean as much as possible cutting back on expenses until you can get income. So that may mean cutting back on things like uh, cell phone plans, yes. uh, eating out, mm -hmm. yes, uh, traveling definitely. here and there. You have to reduce your outcome so you don't need as much income. And then there are certain other things one can do, and that is when you start experiencing stress, exercise is a great stress buster. Another great stress buster is to listen to music that you find soothing or enjoyable okay. and an excellent, most excellent stress manager in this situation is to find someone you can talk to about what you're feeling because the situation won't get any better anytime soon. But if you have someone you can share your fears, your thoughts, your concerns with, that sort of helps get up and off your chest what's in you that's causing stress. Okay, perfect, great. Well, um, those are great tips, so hopefully it you are watching and you're taking notes and um, we're going to take a, a break okay. and uh, when we return we will talk about your book okay. coping with stress for academic success and uh, we'll continue talking about this uh, this uh, topic uh, and there's other questions uh, that the students have uh, provided us with and they want to know the answers to and you're doing a great job so so we'll be back in just a few minutes December 8th for the musical event of the year. Music for the Millennium. Mariachi Symphony Imas performing at the Steinbeck Institute of Art and Culture at Sherwood Hall in Salinas. Featuring the renowned Mariachi Sol de Mexico and the Monterey Symphony together in concert. Music for the Millennium celebrating our multicultural heritage in an evening of exceptional entertainment. La Sirena de la Mar es una 
For an additional cost, this musical gala will also include a black tie dinner, VIP reception, and a post-performance private gathering with the musicians. All proceeds benefit the programs of the Media Center for Art, Education, and Technology and the Millennium Charter High School, opening to freshmen and sophomores in fall 2013. Tickets are on sale now at mccatefoundation.org or call 800-838-3006. Don't miss this exceptional celebration of mariachi, symphony, and more December 8th. For more information or to become a sponsor of music for the Millennium, call 383-9681. All right, welcome back uh, to Gabby Lang Connects, and we're here with Dr. Carlton Oler. He is a doctor in psychology and also a professor of psychology here at Gabby Lang College. Well, one Case. strategy I talk about in the book is know and respect your limits. The first thing we must accept is that we are not supermen or superwomen. Yes. We cannot juggle multiple things effectively. And so for those students that have to work and take classes, and I have students who come to me all the time stressed out, and they're taking a full load and working full time or almost full time, and I recommend to them that they may need to take fewer classes. There are some students who really cannot juggle both work and school. It's going to have to be one or the other, and it may be that they need to work and save up money so that they can go to school and just focus on that. So the first most important thing is to know and respect your limits. If you are spreading yourself too thin with full-time employment and even two or three or more classes, you may have to just take only one class. Yes, thank you. Uh, and um, he's referring to his new book. Coping with Stress for Academic Success, and uh, it's 24 strategies to get the most out of your educational experience. And uh, this book just came out in mm -hmm. August of this year, so congratulations. So Thank now you. you're a doctor in psychology and also an author, mm -hmm. published author. And uh, this is your new book, and um, it's I, I was uh, browsing through it, and uh, it talks about all mm -hmm. the stressors that we all go through, not only students, but um, as adults, we go through those. And, um, and you just put everything as easily read mm -hmm. uh, and easy to follow, and uh, people can relate to mm -hmm. what you're talking about in here mm -hmm. uh, very uh, easily. Uh, so why did you decide that you wanted to write a book and become a published author? I have taught thousands of students over my 30 year career, roughly half of the teaching, and I've observed that there are two types of students, the lackadaisical and the perfectionist. And I've talked with so many of them during my office hours and I've also worked as a staff psychologist in a counseling center, so I've seen them on that side as well. And I just felt convicted that I need to write something to help those students who are both not serious enough about school and those that are too serious about school. You don't want to be at either extreme where you're too serious and you're a great perfectionist or school is way down on your list and it's just something you just have to do. Mm -hmm. You want to be in the healthy middle. So this book has been about eight years in the making and the last year I've been able to really sit down and pull together all I've learned from working with students both as a teacher of psychology and as a staff psychologist working with students. And so I'm glad that it's all pulled together and I've basically poured my all into something that's practical, as you mentioned, easy to read, straightforward, to help students immediately deal with these 24 areas of stress in their life which can affect their academic potential and satisfaction. And um, is this going to be your first and only book, or are you already? Planning? Well, I, I am in the process of, the of next one. percolating around a book for faculty okay. to handle their stress. Because if right. they're stressed out, they bring that into the classroom and they can't be as effective as we'd like to be as instructors. Great idea. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So, uh, in uh, you know, whenever you're ready for uh, mm -hmm. that book, we'll be back and, and talking about that book, Good. right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, my question would be: I recently had a breakup and kind of ended badly. What 
things could I do to help myself or help other people in my situation to get over things like that? Well, we psychologists believe primarily in prevention. How do you prevent problems to begin with? And I, I must say that there are students who probably should not be in a close, intimate boyfriend, girlfriend relationship in school because most relationships have drama. And some people can handle the drama better than others, but yes. my experience professionally mm -hmm. and as a teacher is that most students, particularly females, because they're more sensitive to begin with, that drama can so devastate them that they lose all interest in school, interest in eating, may want to sleep too much. They develop major mood disorder or depressive symptoms. Right. So I think that students, male and female, need to be honest with themselves first in terms of prevention. Am I someone that can handle a serious relationship in school? And if things get dramatic, will that affect my focus on school? And if you know you're like that, then you probably shouldn't be in an intimate relationship. But if you are and there is a breakup, this is what you do. Uh, you want to sit back and you want to ask yourself, how, why did this happen? How much of it, this breakup, did I contribute to? And how much did the other contribute to? You can do nothing about what the other contributed to the breakup, but you can do something about what you did or didn't do that contributed to the breakup, and you want to try to improve in that area. Okay, and uh, what if uh, the student doesn't think about all these uh, right. questions, and, and and the person just wants to have someone, right? You know, to be with someone. Right. They're not really thinking, oh, how is this going to affect right. me with my studies and right. in my personal life? Right. Uh, so basically, I guess we would be dealing with someone maybe mature. Uh, right. You think? Right. Yeah, I, I run into a lot of those students. Okay. Um, there are students, male and female, who feel like they must have a special mm -hmm. one or a boyfriend or a girlfriend. In fact, I call them serial daters. They always <laughs> have somebody. They yeah. cannot be alone. And that's the problem. Oh. They do not feel satisfied, happy, content alone. So they're not really choosing to be in a relationship. They feel compelled right. to be in a relationship. So these type of students I encourage to talk to someone in the counseling center about what it is about not having someone that they feel like they must be with someone. Mm. And then we know that males and females, particularly females, unfortunately, when they do have someone, they build their entire existence around his needs to the neglect of their own often and to the neglect of school. Exactly. Oh, and that happens so often. Well, every counselor needs a counselor. Yes. <laughs> no man, no woman, no anybody is a superman or a superwoman. A counselor needs a counselor, someone she or he can talk to about all they're going through as a counselor right. that's stressful because counselors, psychologists, psychiatrists, we're dealing with people's problems all day, every day. And we need some place we can go to to talk about what we're going through in helping people to get the support we need. And we can also do things that buffer and protect us against the stress, and that is that exercise again. Exercising is a most excellent buffer for stress. I practice it myself, and it keeps me from being overwhelmed. Uh, one can also, again, listen to that soothing music. We all have music that particularly re relaxes us, and we can also do that as well. Soothing music. Mm -hmm. Soothing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, um, well, th those are all great tips. And, and um, this book is such a great resource. So remember, Coping with Stress for Academic Success, 24 Strategies to Get the Most Out of the Educational Experience by uh, Dr. Carlton Oler. And um, this, you know, if you have any problems, you just open it up to the contents page and you'll find it there. If it's, um, if you're a perfectionist, mm -hmm. 
about grades, then you go to chapter seven, and then you get all the information about mm -hmm. classroom etiquette. Mm -hmm. Another thing, uh, how to, to be a good student, uh, and um, to, you know, what are the benefits of sleep, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So there's so much. And uh, if you would like to send a note uh, to Dr. Carlton, you can go to help for you at relic dot info and that's uh, right now on your screen and that's how you can um, send a note if you have any questions uh, and mm -hmm. uh, inquire about the book or about stress uh, or anything uh, else that has mm -hmm. to do with psychology and uh, where else can people find this book this book is available on amazon.com Ah, perfect. Mm -hmm. There you go, easy. And uh, mm -hmm. most of the students, they know how to get there. So mm -hmm. Amazon.com, you can find this book and, um, and get well and uh, become yes. stress-free. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, you know, this uh, has been a, a great uh, program, I think, especially for students. Um, great information, great tips that you have provided uh, mm -hmm. us with. Um, and, um, and I'm hoping that they have taken note and, uh, and apply those tips mm -hmm. to their life. So their stress level comes down mm -hmm. and uh, diminishes yes, <laughs> if yes. possible. And um, as you mentioned, you know, there's all these things that we can do. Exercise, uh, it's mm -hmm. great. Uh, and um, eating healthy, so, mm -hmm. and staying healthy. So may, may I add one thing that yes. we talked about a little bit? Um, I am hoping that one thing students will carry away in this book, I have a chapter on it, is not to focus on GPA grade pun average, but focus on the ALS, actually learning something. Too many yes. students are focused on the outcome, their grade, as opposed to the process, which is learning. Yes. If your focus is on actually learning something, 99.9% .9 of the time, you'll be satisfied with your grade. Yes, that's a great tip. So remember, actually learning something. So thank you so much uh, for being here with us. Uh, we wish you all the best uh, with this book. Thank you. And for you to uh, help uh, a lot of people. And uh, it's a great resource. And we wish you all the best also with your new book. Mm -hmm. We're looking forward to it and uh, in talking to you about that new project okay. uh, when it comes out. Uh, so thank you for thank being you. here with us. And, uh, and we will uh, end it here. Uh, mm -hmm. if, if you want to get this book, go to Amazon.com. So uh, thank you again, and uh, we'll see you next time on another session of Gavilan Connects. Mm -hmm.